quickly introduce our panelists and then hand over to the chair for the panel. Uh, for the panel is uh, Jagan Shah, uh, again, someone who needs no introduction to this audience. He's a widely respected expert and thought leader on urban governance. Uh, he served formally as the director of the National Institute of Urban Affairs in New Delhi. Uh, Jagan has degrees in architecture and architectural history from the School of Planning and Architecture, Delhi, the University of Cincinnati and Columbia University. Uh, and he's the author of the book on contemporary Indian architecture. So he quite literally wrote the book uh, and he's a member of EGOV's advisory board. So we are fortunate to benefit from his advice and expertise even beyond this panel. We were to be joined on the panel by Mr. Kunal Kumar, the Joint Secretary and Director of the Smart Cities Mission in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, uh, who has been a strong champion of the National Urban Innovation Stack and a partner with EGOV. Uh, unfortunately, Kunal sir is not able to join us. Uh, urgent commitments at short notice are an occupational hazard for government officers, uh, and we apologize for uh, or on his behalf. Uh, we have uh, Mr. G. Mati Vatnan, or Mati sir, as he is widely known. He's the principal secretary for the Housing and Urban Development Department of Odisha. Uh, Mati sir is a 1994 batch IAS officer of the Odisha cadre, and he has played a leading role in initiating the Sujog program in Odisha, which, as we said, aims to make the state a national leader in rapid and accessible manner. He also holds an MTech in mechanical engineering. And we look forward to his insights on administration and urban governance. We have Ajay Sharma, IAS officer. He is currently serving as CEO of PMIDC. And as you heard, his leadership was key to Punjab's successful implementation of the Digit platform at an unprecedented pace. Uh, Ajay sir has an MTech from IIT Delhi and a master's in public policy from Princeton. And we look forward to hearing his insights. We have Shilpa Kumar, who is a partner at Omidya Network India, where she oversees the DJD governance, citizen engagement, and property rights portfolios, and leads policy work on financial inclusion. Shilpa has over three decades of experience in the financial sector, including most recently as MD and CEO of ICICI Securities, a number of regulatory and advisory committees. Shilpa is an alumnus of IIM Kolkata and brings her knowledge of finance and sustainability to the development sector. With those introductions, I invite Jagan sir to start us off on the panel. Thank you, Jagan sir. Uh, thanks, Amir, and thanks very much for giving the introductions as well. Then I can dive straight into um, our session for today. <clears throat> I hope uh, all the panelists did get an opportunity to listen to Mr. Arish Sharma uh, earlier in his keynote address, because I think um, our panel should really discuss ways in which we can, in a sense, live up to that very, very high uh, benchmark that was created with the creation of Aadhaar and the ecosystem around uh, Aadhaar. Um, and I think what, what was fascinating for me was to, to reflect back on the kind of dates that that he recalled, such as um, the uh, Digital India focus that came from 2014 onwards, uh, was quite a revelation. I still remember being asked by uh, uh, the ministry to reflect on how Digital India can get reflected in the urban sector in 2014. And it's just phenomenal the way in which um, the the Digital India impact on the urban sector has, has grown with leaps and bounds. Um, I think Hiren mentioned that they worked in Andhra Pradesh in 2015. They, they, they found a solution there. And I was thinking that what if the Smart City mission had actually worked on the lines that the first secretary, Mr. Shankar Agarwal, wanted to do, which was the Digital India backbone? And what if we had pursued that, given that we already had one successful state uh, example of a municipal uh, e-governance. So, you know, th th these are interesting times to reflect on what is possible and uh, what is uh, achievable. Um, I just want to also uh, preface our panel discussion with just recognizing how important this triangulation of forces that e-government foundation talks about, Samaj, Sarkar, and Bazaar, how evocative that is also in terms of 
thinking about integrated, convergent, and effective urban governance um, using ICT and, and, and other technologies. Um, so this is a confluence which we should continue to explore and also about the new kinds of digital public goods that can be created. And Mr. Sharma stressed that, I think he mentioned several times that for the urban sector, there is just tremendous potential. And um, you know, I think in today's panel discussion, we'll get a chance to explore what all those new potentials are as well. Um, and lastly, and in fact, as a beginning of our panel discussion, I'd like to say that I think we've also found ourselves in a paradigm shift uh, in terms of the impacts of pandemic on the way in which we are looking at cities and the way we look at uh, uh, the economic as well as social life of cities um, and, and how this can be um, explored as the trigger for new ideas. So in fact, I want to uh, welcome our panelists for today. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'd like to in fact uh, ask you to give very short thoughts on how have you seen in the pandemic period uh, instances where you felt that there was greater need for digitalization? This is just a warm up question. Maybe you can spend two minutes each and I'd like to ask uh, um, uh, Mati sir to, to maybe start. Um, just a two minute reflection during the pandemic, what, what struck you as, as greater need for digitalization? Thank you, Jagan. Thank you, Iga, for the uh, opportunity. Uh, what uh, the pandemic has uh, uh, you know, posed before us is that they, it has taken away the option of uh, exercise. Uh, the, it has taken away the option of uh, digital mode of governance. It has said that uh, digital mode of governance is a compulsion. Either you take it or leave it. The manual is now no more available, no longer available. So completely the COVID lockdown, shutdown, restrictions have completely forced us in an almost in an irreversible way to move towards complete digitization not a hybrid model not on off not manual plus or this or that no this is only this so including the you know though government of odisha has been implementing automated workflow system e-governance on digital platform all those things but we always had an exception. Certain things will not go through the digital mode, like the case, the, the court cases, litigations, the legislative matters, those kind of sensitive things. We are always out of we are always out of the digital, you know, online mode. But the COVID has forced us that everything, hundred percent. So in our own, you know, so since we could not go to office, everybody had to work offline, online, from home. So that has made us, you know, it's a, it's a transformative change, irreversible transformative change. And it's, an, it's a great opportunity. It has given us a great opportunity. It's a blessing in a disguise, I would say, that we could completely move on to the digital. Thank you. That, that, that's a very... That's a very useful and quick reflection. Uh, you've affirmed the very purpose of, of our session. Thank you very much. Can I request Shilpa to share just a two minute uh, reflection? Yeah, I, I think for me, the biggest reflection, uh, Jagan, was the fact that uh, you, you realized how much you, didn't, how much you did not know about your own city, uh, about how people stayed, where they were living, uh, you know, uh, maybe the access to services. I think that came out very starkly, uh, especially as we tried, uh, you know, to look at how guest workers were headed home. Uh, on the other side, I would say, you know, the, the other thing the pandemic showed up is that when you had a digitized pipeline available, like, for example, we had for welfare benefits, how it, you know, really fell in place to send out welfare benefits to so many people uh, uh, in, in a really uh, deliberate way. So I, I think it showed us both, both sides of that coin. Thanks. And uh, Ajoy? A quick reflection from you. Yeah, so uh, the beginning of the epidemic, uh, collection of revenues and all, it was kind of uh, not the topmost priority. Topmost priority was to contain this epidemic and all. And uh, as we had our GIS based maps, so first of all, it was very easy to analyze where is the disease happening. And to create those containment zones and everything. So, because we were working on it and we already had it, 
so it was so much easier uh, otherwise because it didn't come with any warning so otherwise it would have been very difficult to analyze the data and pinpoint the cases and definitely as much as i said that it was a blessing and disguise in the sense definitely uh, uh, take up of our online services has definitely increased and uh, now this uh, vcs and meetings on zoom webex has become become the way of all these meetings saving a lot of cost in transportation lot of your time and uh, it has it has really helped in uh, bringing efficiency to our working fantastic thank you um that that's a good warm up actually because i think each of you have described um different dimensions of this um let's let's explore this a little further and just in terms of uh, protocol what i'd like to do is to maybe address a question uh, uh, or an observation to one of you and then um the other panelists are welcome to simply uh, jump in i noticed that we are not able to raise our hands at least uh, i'm not sure if i can um i think there is a raise hand uh, button in the sidebar with the names of participants so if you'd like to raise your hand but you are welcome to just jump in so um i want to come back to um uh, mr mathi vatanand you know you you said that now henceforth this is the only way to look at uh, urban governance um i'd like you to unbundle that a little bit and and uh, share with us what are those dimensions of uh, converting now to an e governance mode uh in the context of odisha so we have been uh, we have been providing the uh, the various municipal services as an online service through the digital platform for a very long time it was uh, uh, it is it's called the e municipality platform with limited modules available now uh, recently we have signed an mou with the ega foundation to bring the whole bunch of uh, uh, all municipal services across the board throughout the state what smart cities in some states have done so all those services for all the urban local bodies in the state in one go we are doing it and uh, we have just rolled out the implementation very shortly in the coming months we will you know we will be commissioning one module after another module and the next 6 to 9 months we we expect to have all modules on board for all the cities Uh, in the entire state, covering the entire urban population, that that that's a, that's a very exciting development that's happening. Ego is supporting us. Uh, uh, that that's going to kind of you know completely transform all all you know, the, the the quality of services to the urban citizens. Everything would be in a single platform, including the water, the sanitation, municipal services, all. So, but but if i understand correctly you'll still have a number of functions which where data is being captured manually for instance in in registers and ledgers and so on has that completely been stopped that analog mode or yeah in, in the current system we have that offline we have that online which we are going to discontinue with the uh, digit platform with the new modules on board it would become a only online uh, with no manual uh, uh, option available at all and it will be a compulsory one that's what we are working so that would so, not be irreversible so in some senses this is uh, the digital e governance platform allows us to look at a sort of a um, uh, you know the idea of the prime minister that there should be more governance and less government does the digital mode also pose a certain threat in terms of access or in terms of inclusion yeah yeah that that's that's our major uh, concern so when we move on to complete uh, uh, digital governance we need to see whether the digital governance is going to be inclusive governance whether we are that's that's going to serve the entire all segments of the population so all said and done odisha has about 25% of the population living in the slum areas and if you take bhuvaneshwar it's about 35 40% the, the larger cities have a uh, very considerable population ranging from 30 40 50 percent also in some of the industrial areas so we need to see whether they are digitally included or not we are very concerned that our complete online uh, digital mode of governance may lead to digital exclusion digital marginalization it can become a major trigger force for marginalizing the community 
and uh, it may lead to digital discrimination digital deprivation you call leading to a digital divide so we are very concerned about that how are we going to it's a, it's a great challenge how are we going to address that so on the 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 option could be that now almost everybody is on a mobile phone and mostly android so how quickly we can uh, you know make all these services through mobile app mobile based services even mobile based governance we need to you know move on to uh, you know uh, see even uh, since now we are in from work from home flexible working hours so when we are into that mode so it's it's it's, it's high time that we move our governance system also into mobile based governance in any case we are operating on whatsapp we are part of several official whatsapp groups emails we attend to all those things using the mobile so it's a we it's time that we also you know uh, uh, integrate the mobile into our office auto flow uh, you know workflow system and uh, using the mobile you should be able to deliver your daily uh, uh, this providing providing the urban services so we are we are uh, uh, conscious about the digital divide that's happening and our challenge would be to how how we can make the uh, digital platform affordable to the uh, the marginalized segments those who live in the urban poor segments so how do we ensure that they are not left out in the process how do we uh, make sure that they also have the devices they have access and how do we make these language also will not, should not become a barrier the apps is there Uh, is, is is there a role for the 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 bazaar element for the market to play a role or the private sector to play a role in this private sector has to come forward there is a huge gap the private sector has to fill in that government has to partner with the private players to ensure that the devices are available at reasonable cost at an affordable cost to the uh, uh, marginalized and these services are provided through the mobile platform so here the role of play private players would be very very critical so we need to can i um, um can, can i request uh, shilpa to come in here and shilpa if you could share your perspective on on the point that uh, mr mativathan has raised that the private sector needs to step in what does omidyar network see as as being possible barriers to that or opportunities yeah so i i think the the nandar mobile you know trinity actually was a great uh, illustration of how when the pipeline was laid and opened up uh, you know in a sense the private sector could come innovate innovate at cost i mean to really deliver an efficient and cheap uh, service which suddenly just transformed the financial landscape so i think that's a great you know case study uh, having said that you know when you look at civic tech it's not quite followed the same path uh, and maybe there are reasons for it so you know we've done a lot of work on this even uh, in the united states as a group and our learning there was that you know for entrepreneurs to come in uh, entrepreneurs will come in because there is a lot of excitement on how can you take you know the the modular pipeline offered by let's say digital uh, civic uh, you know technology how do you use that to set up business models that work off it but i think the two big differences that come over there uh, compared to let's say financial services is sometimes a lot of these uh, entrepreneurs depend on the government uh, for payment uh, so you know that becomes one so you know government um, uh, as as the uh, you know end party who has to pay for services becomes one part of it uh the second part of it is the citizens themselves might not be willing to pay too much uh, for some of these services so i think these are the you know central uh, differentiating points uh, between a uh, financial services and civic tech and what that has meant is you know uh, while uh, vc money has gone into some of these kind of entrepreneurships the the sustenance of these entrepreneurs becomes important and Uh, i i think there's a need to really focus on how we can make a sustainable civic entrepreneurship happen uh, i i think that's really uh, you know the big area of focus uh, if i may jagan i also want to you know briefly comment upon the other point mr mathivan made uh, which is to do with uh, marginalization and uh, 
It's absolutely true. Even if you look at uh, the financial services sector, while you know, uh, gender Aadhaar mobile has resulted in great pipe to most most Indians. It has also meant that those who are the most marginalized are the most excluded. Uh, so, so if you take that and you kind of overlay that back into, uh, you know, the urban space, uh, I think it doesn't take away the argument for digitization, but I think it makes a strong argument for maybe having intermediaries play that role between uh, the community uh, and uh, the tech interface, uh, sometimes just to get them familiar and to get them going. Uh, and I think that's a really important role for, you know, community leaders, NGOs, uh, you know, to play uh, in terms of bridging this divide. Uh, thanks, Shilpa. I'm going to actually come back to that point about the intermediaries. Um, but I first uh, want to turn to Mr. Sharma. Um, Mr. Sharma, you had you had shared with me some very insight, uh, very insightful thoughts on uh, the capacity constraints as well as the making this change management work successfully within the state government apparatus. So, um, can I uh, request you to speak about? The scaling challenge, uh, in some senses, Mr. Mati Vatanan has talked about a state level uh, platform to start with, and you're also implementing something like that. But are there barriers to scaling, um, which you'd like to point out? Uh, yeah, Jagan. Uh, uh, so uh, before coming to that point, if I may add to Mati sir's point. And, please, uh, please. Shilpaji's point about digital divide. It's a very uh, genuine uh, kind of concern. And uh, that was the reason that we have started kind of integrating WhatsApp into it. WhatsApp is something which is definitely, you cannot say it is owned by 100% of the people, yes, but it accesses much, much more. So our complaint registration system is our complaint uh, uh, redressal system from end to end, it's on WhatsApp. Uh, till now, most of the governments or most, most of the government officers, they are using WhatsApp uh, as kind of groups or to kind of uh, in, in informal way. But we have integrated it in a formal way and our next step would be obviously through the partnership with eGov and WhatsApp to integrate all the services into WhatsApp. So a person who wants a, his water connection or sewer connection, he can simply do it through WhatsApp. Just it's as simple as chatting on WhatsApp. He doesn't even have to know that to download any app. Actually, if we look at uh, even this mobile governance, n number of apps are there. And for example, the Swachita app, which was there with Swachhwarat Mission, it took hell out of effort to get it downloaded and Mati uh, would second me on that. It took a lot, lot of our energies to get it downloaded. So if we come out with different apps or different uh, work, it becomes difficult. But WhatsApp is something which is now being used by everyone. So that is one way I feel that we can definitely uh, help this out and we can kind of uh, take care of this concern of digital divide. Uh, second, uh, we also, uh, there was a discussion about entrepreneurs. Yes, a single organization cannot do it all. It has to be a teamwork where entrepreneurs also come into picture. For example, even this WhatsApp thing, now, there are companies who have started uh, working on this stuff. So eGov, through those startups, worked on it and we were able to create this uh, application or create this platform on WhatsApp. So I think for that, again, the governments will have to be liberal also. Till now, what we are doing is we are sitting on a lot of tons of data, but we don't want to kind of disclose it to the public or to the entrepreneurs in the name of privacy, secrecy. 
बट जस्ट आई थिंक हाइडिंग द सेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन और जो सेंसिटिव इंफॉर्मेशन वी मस्ट शेयर और वी मस्ट हैव दोज पॉलिसीज थ्रू विच वी कैन शेयर डेटा विद एंटरप्रेन्योर्स एंड ट्रस्ट मी इफ इट इज डन लॉट many services will come on their own people are ready to pay like obviously uh, with this digital transaction the transaction costs are more not that high for example right now if if there is some uh, even suvidha center or something where one has to pay bill he has to pay maybe 10 rupees 15 rupees extra but with digital transaction it's like hardly one or two rupees so that money is not a matter of uh, it's not obstructing you what is obstructing is we need to open it up so that the entrepreneurs can come in and can provide creative services and when there will be competition when will be free market then definitely people will get efficient services uh the thing you asked about its expansion or its roll out yes definitely if when we talk about e governance and uh, again uh, uh, i would need mathi sir support and is seconding but he would also uh, have experienced the same thing in last 22 years in my service i have seen that uh, procuring these e governance solutions becomes in an end in itself so first of all you will hire very uh, expensive consultants who will work on all your dprs and then they will prepare rfps and that kind of stuff and then these big companies will fight it out i would not name the companies but all of we know that these are all big techy companies with lot of uh, legal cells with them fight with each other like anything in fact in our normal contracts where we lay uh, pipelines or sewer and all companies don't fight that much as we have seen in <laughs> with the it companies so what i'm saying is procurement of this thing itself becomes an end in itself like and then after that they will come with like at every point of a point of time you have to give some sign off you have to do this business process engineering for things obviously solutions simply not like uh, is not converting manual thing into your electronic thing you have to do business process engineering again you need to have capacity for that without the capacity without the team it is not possible generally the people or the companies who come or advise your political bosses they give this thing that we will give end to end thing but believe me there is nothing like end to end i think we must see where is the competitive advantage for the private sector where is for the government what things can be done efficiently by the government and what can be done by the private sector for example i give a uh, death and birth certificate kind of thing this is the issue of that in uh, punjab a big company was given this job a very big company i will not name and it took 10 years until now more than 10 years data has not been digitized in fact unfortunately most of the services we have done are uh, with the e governance thing in last two years but we are not able to do that birth and death certificate thing because we are stuck with that company now i think i think mathi mathi sir will have full sympathies for you in this regard um because he's also been innovating on procurement systems in fact if you if you'll just allow me I'll, i'd like to shift to mathi sir to ask uh, about the point that uh, uh, ajoy has raised about the um, customization of the technology for the use on whatsapp as well as the uh, the way in which they've actually been customizing it um can i um, request you to come in with with some thoughts also about what shilpa talked about in terms of civic tech and this entrepreneurship how has the market played a role in the context in odisha i would like to talk about the ease of uh, you know digitizing the whole thing which ajay sharma highlighted 
in fact i i do share that is it's not so easy i think we need to work on ease of uh, you know digitizing the whole thing we signed the mou with ego one year ago and we have just one month ago we rolled out the execution process almost it took about 11 months of course the covid also has inter- inter- interrupted the whole thing but even otherwise it's a it's a very difficult time consuming process to deal with the technology companies go, go, government government system do not have that kind of capacity so if i if you see my uh, you know uh, this digitization process which we have taken up supported by ego i have n number of other agencies also in the entire it is not that i i uh, sign an mou with ego and i am able to get this so that i need to have another consulting organization to support i have e and i we have to have an implementing partner we have the pwdc so two tenders i had to bring out to implement that plus as ajay has rightly pointed out every stage we need to sign up certain things to approve the process so for that also i don't have that capacity to understand and but you know foresee all the complications the implication of those things and then take you know considered decision we need to have another intermediate agency we can't completely rely upon ui also so we have janagraha also so how many partners i will have all these partners have to work together to deliver that digital solution so we need to actually work, work on simplifying the whole process and make it more you know government friendly citizen friendly not only citizen friendly to make it citizen friendly how to make it first government friendly to you know to take it forward then to provide to the citizen right um uh, shilpa if i can request you to come in here uh, so this this entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem that uh, mr mathivatanan is kind of talking about here it's a need there is there seems to be demand from within government um uh, mr ajay sharma has also talked about this do you think that um omedia foundation and other such organizations ega foundation working together um can find a solution to this and can there be a collective sort of meeting of minds on yeah no for sure uh, yes chakan i think that's the short answer and i think we're trying various different experiments to get there and uh, you know the financial services always stays as you know guiding light in a sense that how do you put um, you know how how can government put a minimum horizontal pipe like dr arish sharma said how can you put that basic pipe in place and then allow private sector to come in which can probably do it cheaper faster etc cetera, etc cetera, you know so how do you marry the two and i i think we for for one are you know definitely interested to make these experiments uh, you know and see what we can learn from them and how do you make them work um so it is something which we are trying for instance uh, you know with iisc uh, uh where there is an attempt to try and put a a platform together which can you know be the layer on top of the basic government uh, uh, tech that happens so i i think that's one experiment uh, there's another experiment we are trying where we will uh, in a sense encourage entrepreneurs to work off uh, such digital platforms that are available uh and and actually incubate maybe some of them we've already tried that with village capital a few years ago uh had some learning some of which i i just shared also uh and and definitely it's an experiment that we'd like to see uh it work but i think like uh, any example and again dr arish sharma you know gave gave a fabulous comparison to uh you know the aadhar npci kind of story i think the important thing becomes okay and what's the structure of the basic highway or basic platform uh what are the economics of it for someone who's coming in what are the rules of the game and uh, you know most of all very importantly also uh, how how do you address things like uh, privacy because uh, in the end as we digitize with great speed it also becomes important to balance that one uh, in the construct of some of these handoffs you know so when you make these handoffs uh, when data flows from government tech platforms into let's say private business models uh, what should flow what should not flow uh, what are those gray areas who makes those decisions 
uh, all of these things become uh, fairly important. And um, uh, we'd love to see this, you know, private sector uh, interplay also happen. And also, what are the rules of the game for something like that to happen? You're on mute. You're on mute, Chidan. Oops. Um, so uh, I'd like to turn again to, to Ajoy. Um, Ajoy, if you can just uh, also reflect on that point about capacity building, because this is something that you have uh, really been uh, struggling with, and I'm sure that uh, Mati Patmansar also struggled with it uh, in Odisha. Um, could you reflect on this being one of the binding constraints, or is it something that we can overcome quite easily? Uh, Ajoy, are you there with us? Definitely, it's a, it's a constraint. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, we must uh, build the capacity in the government. Uh, what is happening uh, over the last 10, 15 years, uh, I'm not saying that consultants are bad, but at the same time, totally giving up your thing and your capabilities and just uh, putting everything on the consultants and it. It, it has, in fact, deteriorated our capacity in all governments. Now, whatever cap little capacity we have, now, after consultants are there, ENY, PwC, whoever. Now, the person in the government says that it's his work, it's not my work. And, in fact, in most of the e-governance project, what is happening all across the country is like, now we have outsource these services to these companies. Now, it's their job. We are not bothered. But it doesn't happen like that. So why we went for eGov was, very simple reason, was definitely, first of all, we went into their credentials, their codes, and everything. And for that, uh, on personal level, I kind of uh, used my uh, college day batchmates to kind of to have a look on the kind of code and everything what kind of uh, professionalism do they have? Though, uh, obviously, uh, Ego Foundation had the big names, Omnia Foundation and um, Nandan Sir. But still, uh, I had to be sure about it because it was a big decision. We had, uh, in 2010, we had floated a tender of more than 200 crore plus. And when I had joined, a tender was again from 2010, it was 2017 when I joined, and again, RFP was floated. And uh, uh, seven years, we have paid, we have uh, paid a lot of money to the consultants, and it was not finalized. Uh, definitely, it was a big decision that for seven years, you have been trying for something, and you are trying to drop in big companies. But ultimately, if you have to give, give it to eco foundation, you have to be very sure. And uh, uh, my minister, local government minister, I said that you leave it on me. I take this challenge, that kind of thing. And for that, I had to be prepared. I, uh, I was lucky that finally he agreed and said, go ahead. But uh, generally, it doesn't happen in the government. Even if it is free, people see, I don't know what are the motives. And you know, uh, uh, that 200 crore thing or project, I'm doing it completely free of cost. I'm not paying a penny to it, but I am facing a high court case. I am facing a complaint in the personal department, which I have recently got, and I am going to uh, answer it to them. You decide whether to uh, uh, felicitate me for saving 200 crore rupees or to kind of, kind of go ahead. <laughs> so, funny thing. So, you so yeah. be very sure that what you are doing is uh, correct and everything. So, initially, I took one, in, one or two months to kind of get to it. And then I had this thing in mind very clear that I have to build a team. Without a team with me, I will not be able to take it forward. And that was, and actually, um, EGov team and the local government department, uh, Punjab team or PMA team worked hand in hand. At times we didn't know that this uh, e-governance, e-gov foundation, or PMIDC. Se hai. So there was such a uh, perfect synchronization and we didn't wait as Mati sir had said that and I all, had also pointed out that every this thing we have to sign off and off. We didn't have those big documents. We would sit 
each process each service one by one both the teams together will go through that uh, business process engineering kind of thing we create that core team would give suggestion and finally we would approve it so that the trust and the confidence was there we could do it and over a period of time initially we had a very core team to work on this uh, bpr and then we created the stack team also so that uh, we knew that ego foundation is there for some time and and we are really thankful that uh, though we say is facing some challenge in kind of uh, procuring the partners like e and y but in case of punjab ego foundation did customization even on their own so uh, we were right. lucky, lucky that way but over a period so, of time we we built our team so that day to day functions and those kind of uh, support systems we could handle ourselves and still we are in the process that uh, and now our people can definitely based uh, uh, using the digit platform they can develop different uh, uh, applications uh, as per the needs but yes we also need some higher kind of higher end of capacity which again we are trying to develop it either we would uh, uh, do it in house so we are trying that our uh, governance reform department houses it but it's a matter of like internal uh decision and in next two to three months we will have those high end people also that's fantastic because uh, at least they have w- one very important part of this whole ecosystem is the champion and you are the champion quite clearly i mean you're even facing uh, court cases in th- in this regard um yeah. i'd like to quickly yeah. turn to uh, mathi sir for uh, for yeah. in fact uh, requesting him to reflect on whether the odisha experience is, has been different from what ajoy has described in punjab now i would like to in fact congratulate uh, mr ajay for this uh, you know for the leadership he has provided to this program the ownership the extreme they call it as an extreme ownership in leadership so you own up the program and then you stake your own you know you stake yourself to that i take that responsibility it's very rare to you know take that kind of stance for a program it's a huge risk you know uh, t- t- taking that challenge before the political bosses that uh, i take up the responsibility of course ego has must have given the kind of confidence hiren and his team would have kind of inspired the kind of confidence i also will take but not with many organizations you can take that kind of risk fortunately we have this ego not for profit organized foundation with committed professionals there so with them it's actually a kind of you know blessing to work with such partners to take up such programs but today uh, uh, thanks to this webinar it's a discovery that uh, ega foundation has adopted a discriminatory approach they helped the punjab in customizing that and uh, asked asked odisha to go to the market and find a friend for themselves is very bad i thought that uh, ega foundation would be fair to all i, I think viraj is- Viraj is listening, and I'm ah, sure yeah. he's taking notes. So, no, I think, uh, 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 I think, uh, just from a scale point of view, what is a Punjab was the first uh, implementation of a new platform, so we were also learning. But I think if we had to scale, uh, you know, uh, we have to take a approach of uh, catalyzing the ecosystem because otherwise, you know, we'll take another two years to do Odisha, and then another two years to do UP and everything. I know. I just so Punjab was the first experiment. i think uh, we kind of took that step of uh, and we this was the first time a new platform a customer was coming so we also had to learn how to enable other people so over last two years i think now we have only one or two people working there a lot of enablement has happened and they are taking over the platform uh, but i think no, it was in a lighter note on a lighter note but we have just we have just taken off uh, in the implementation we will we will be learning a lot but we are i must say that some of the modules are very very challenging like for example the online building plan approval system with with uh, you know the approve the auto scrutiny module is a very challenging one we have been working on that for the past 5 6 years with two two uh, technology companies both have failed we had to uh, prematurely close the contract abandon the work complete done for about 3 4 years and then redo the whole thing with Uh, ego the on uh, this uh, platform so that is the, that's one of the important thing in the ease of doing business also we have been losing that but it's a so it's, it's a challenging one 
we are hopeful that um, the module, first module we are taking up in the digit platform with a target of two three months time to complete it we are hopeful that we'll we'll get through that fantastic um so we we only have a few minutes left in our in our time for this uh, webinar so um i want to ask you mati uh, mati sir to um share just in about a minute what what do you think as is, is the future where is where is this headed um uh, i'd like you to do some future gazing um but just share some thoughts on that yeah urban governance uh, is transforming very fast post covid i have a feeling that we are in the crossroads we are in the junction that uh, the core city concept may not work anymore the city would be you know horizontally spreading we need to focus on the peri urban areas adjoining rural areas with you know work from home becoming you know norm flexible timing and a lot of the covid will stay for some more time so we 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 may experience this uh, situation for very long time forcing people to remain at home how do we provide those services so you know the, during pandemic we have experienced that the core city which used to have the markets and the offices they were not taking up the water the demand for the water has come down whereas the residential areas the water demand has gone up so it doubled so our distribution system has been kind of uh, put into huge challenge so how do we strengthen the urban services in the peri urban areas providing in all areas that would become a, you know our focus point and the uh, you know densification all those things uh, will will become a question mark the our focus is in the city okay thank you thank you when we ask an ias officer about future gazing they still talk about things to do it's very interesting you're you're so focused on action and and uh, you know it, it's really remarkable um so um if if i can ask uh, shilpa shilpa would you like to just do some future gazing for us a very quick thought yeah i i think you know covid really gave us an opportunity to you know really reflect on uh, maybe this the state of our cities uh, gives us an opportunity also uh, you know to really take the lego blocks available right now like dr sharma said you know there are various lego blocks available uh, there are you know platforms like uh, digit uh, which is an enabler um, there are entrepreneurs there are ngos who are willing to come in Uh, how do you take these lego blocks and make the sum of parts uh, uh you know something much greater than uh, what it is uh, and i would only conclude by saying that you know when i see uh, dynamic leaders like mr mativan uh, mr sharma uh, i i think even if we get you know one or two states really doing this at scale uh, i think it will be a lighthouse uh, uh, project which will really energize uh, you know other states as well so really look forward to that fantastic um ajoy one final thought from you very quickly uh what's the future so, look like more than a thought it's a it would be a request to omedia foundation and such kind of uh, kind of organizations who are funding this project now what i see is and uh, again mathi sir will uh, again second me if we can create a group of Three to four states or three to four like-minded officers who can kind of show that these are the needs and what happens that in each state and each city, if you look at it, eighty to ninety percent of the cities would need certain solutions. What I'm saying is, if that kind of pipeline can be created in no time rather than waiting for two years, because we see the need that we need this but at the same time i know that i need this but for procuring all those kind of stuff it may take me one year two year and then by the time i need to change so if we can create that group and who can kind of think tank who can kind of uh, uh, come out with suggestions that we have to work on one or two or three services in the short term and medium term and obviously funding it can be like government and these uh, foundations can definitely uh, uh, pay for it or maybe kind of fund it uh, but the rather than each city reinventing the wheel if we can provide something some basic platform that would be very nice and it would actually it would uh, be very meaningful 
Fantastic. Thank you. That that's that's a that's a little bit of looking forward into the future where we can look at greater greater networking amongst the different uh, agents within this overall network of people who are building the e-governance. Um, I think that's great. Um, I, I'm afraid we will have to close now. We are actually well past our last time. I just wanted to remind the audience that uh, our panelists today have actually uh, uh, shared with us a rich uh, array of insights. Uh, we started with Mati sir very emphatically saying that uh, the manual mode is no longer possible in government. E-governance is the future or has already arrived as a future. Um, I think Shilpa pointed out just the way in which the, the uh, pandemic has actually opened up our horizons in terms of what we didn't know and need to know about cities and the way in which human beings interact in our cities um, was an important insight. And um, I think uh, Joyce's um, uh, example of using GIS for containment of the pandemic, how that in a sense was also a revelatory use of GIS was very important. Just a few other key points to take away. Um, we have talked at length about digital ex exclusion or the digital divide and ways in which we can begin to bridge that. Um, I think the uh, point about civic tech, which Shilpa brought up, is, is really crucial. We didn't get enough time to engage on that, but I think our, our community uh, gathered here today can take this forward. Um, uh, the importance of the entrepreneur. Uh, in some senses, government itself is an entrepreneur now in the space of e-governance um, and how the roles and responsibilities, uh, Ajoy had mentioned, the roles and responsibilities have to be very clear who does uh, from the government side, who does from the uh, private sector side. Um, and importantly, uh, issues that trip up the whole process, like the time lost uh, seven years, 10 years in actually procuring services. This simply is not possible anymore. It, we cannot afford that kind of time. So um, this system has to be good enough to deliver quick outcomes for us as well. And I think the, the last point I want to close on, which um, uh, Mati sir just mentioned is really important. This idea that the city itself has been transformed by the pandemic and the fact that, for instance, water supply networks have to adapt to a, a changing landscape of demand. This is something that we will also have to deal with as we go forward and to really see how uh, uh, ICT and GIS and these technologies can come together to build the e-governance uh, of, of the future, which is uh, already here. So with that, I'd like to thank our panelists. Thank you very much. Uh, Ajoy sir, uh, Mati sir, Shilpa, thank you very much for, for joining and also to our audience. Um, and I hope that you can take away some useful points for whatever you are doing in your work. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.